Hey guys, and welcome to the Chemistry Shack. In this video, I will show you how to dissolve US nickels. There are many methods to do this, but in this video, I will focus on the sulfuric acid and hydrogen peroxide method. If you do this yourself, note that it is illegal in the United States to fraudulently deface US coins. However, defacing coins without fraudulent intent is perfectly fine according to treasury.gov. Just know that this procedure is for educational purposes only, and I am not responsible if you choose to do anything illegal. With the disclaimer out of the way, we can move on to the actual experiment. US nickels consist of 75% copper and 25% nickel by mass. We will be dissolving them in sulfuric acid to make a mixture of copper 2 sulfate and nickel 2 sulfate. Because both copper and nickel are too unreactive to dissolve in sulfuric acid alone, we need to add hydrogen peroxide to oxidize the metals and allow them to dissolve in the acid. For every nickel you want to dissolve, measure out 4.3 milliliters of 98% sulfuric acid and 12 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide. You'll notice that we are using an excess of hydrogen peroxide and that the sulfuric acid is the limiting reagent. We use an excess of peroxide because a lot of it will actually decompose due to the heat of the reaction. We are using less than the required amount of sulfuric acid so that no acid is left if we decide to boil it. This will prevent acid fumes from being produced, but it will mean that the nickels will not completely dissolve. Since I wanted to dissolve 3 nickels, I measured out 13 milliliters of sulfuric acid and 75 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. My peroxide is 15%, but if you have 30% hydrogen peroxide, you will only need 35 milliliters. Add the 13 milliliters of acid to 20 mils of water to dilute it. Then dilute the hydrogen peroxide solution to 15% by adding an appropriate amount of water. I didn't have to do this step because my peroxide was already at 15%. The acid water mixture will become quite hot due to the exothermic dissolution of the sulfuric acid, so wait for it to cool to room temperature before proceeding. Add the nickels to the acid water mixture and set up an addition funnel over the beaker. Then add the hydrogen peroxide to the funnel. Begin adding the hydrogen peroxide dropwise to the solution. You will notice an immediate reaction and a blue-green color being produced as nickel and copper sulfates are forming. Monitor the temperature with a thermometer and try to keep it between 60 and 80 Celsius. We want it to be hot enough so that the reaction can occur at a faster rate, but we don't want it to be so hot that the hydrogen peroxide violently decomposes. If that happens, the mixture will bubble over and spill everywhere. I wanted to show you guys what this would look like, so I added a lot of hydrogen peroxide to the mixture at once, and as you can see, it spilled all over the place and made a huge mess. For this reason, it's a good idea to do this reaction in a glass tray to catch any spills. If the mixture gets too hot, stop addition of the hydrogen peroxide and cool the solution with an ice bath before proceeding to add more peroxide. You can see that I left the mixture in the ice bath a bit too long and the nickel and copper sulfates actually crystallized onto the nickels. This was actually pretty cool even though it was unintended. Once I had finished admiring the crystals, I continued adding hydrogen peroxide to the mixture. Eventually, the heat from the reaction was enough to redissolve the crystals. You may find that the reaction isn't complete even after all the peroxide has been used up. If this happens, just fill the funnel with fresh peroxide and continue the addition. What is happening is that the hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid oxidize the copper and nickel metals, forming nickel 2 sulfate, copper 2 sulfate, and water. There are no gases being produced in the reaction, so the bubbles you see are due to some of the hydrogen peroxide decomposing to oxygen gas. Eventually, the bubbling will subside, and this signals the end of the reaction. You will be left with a green-blue solution and undissolved nickels at the bottom. The nickels are removed using a pair of tweezers. You can see that the acid rendered the nickels completely unrecognizable. At this point, they really just look like lumps of metal. 
One of them is actually so thin that I can bend it with just my fingers. This just goes to show the metal dissolving power of sulfuric acid and hydrogen peroxide. Anyway, this blue-green solution contains both nickel 2 sulfate and copper 2 sulfate. You can boil it down to obtain crystals of copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate and nickel 2 sulfate hexahydrate. This is a sample of the crystals produced from a separate run following the same procedure. I decided not to boil down the solution that I obtained from this run because I will be using it in the future to separate and recover the nickel metal. The solution was transferred to a glass bottle for storage. In a future video, I will show an alternative method to dissolve nickels using hydrochloric acid instead of sulfuric acid. I will also be attempting to isolate the nickel metal from this solution in the future. In the meantime, make sure to click that like button if you enjoyed this video. Also, feel free to leave a comment on suggestions for experiment ideas. I'd love to hear your input, so let me know if you have anything you'd like to see. Also, if you like my videos, make sure to subscribe to The Chemistry Shack so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. Subscribing is completely free and it's a great way to stay up to date on all my videos. Well anyways, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.